Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to start with thin cylinders and spheres. So again, pressure vessels uh, generally a container which is holding any liquid. We may uh, we commonly also the boilers are pressure vessels. So any container which has uh, some storage capacity, okay, uh, whether it can be a liquid, whether it can be pressurized gas or a pressurized liquid, such vessels are generally termed as pressure vessels. Well, if you if you see a uh, city pipes which they were drinking water, they are huge in diameters, a meter in diameter or so. Those can also be thought of as pressure vessels. Even the uh, simple containers where storage of a liquid takes place in an industrial area, that can be thought of as a pressure vessels. Okay. Again, this uh, thin cylinders and spear is an important topic in strength of material. It's very simple, uh, straightforward. Only four formulas that you need to remember and the sums are very much simple to solve as well. So let's begin with uh, pressure vessels. Pressure vessels are then broadly classified into two types. We have thin pressure vessels and we have thick pressure vessels. What you have in your syllabus is only thin pressure vessels. That is why I have encircled it. So thin pressure vessels is what you have in your gate syllabus. So how do you distinguish a thin and a thick pressure vessel? So in most of the books it is given when you have internal diameter to thickness ratio. So I just modify that relation and write here this internal diameter internal diameter upon thickness. If it is greater than or equal to 15, then it is known as thin pressure vessel. And if it is less than 15, obviously it is a thick pressure vessel. Okay. So the criteria to decide thin and thick is depending upon the internal diameter to the thickness ratio. Now this thin pressure vessels are again classified depending upon their geometry. So for your syllabus you have a cylindrical pressure vessel and a spherical pressure vessel. We will see both of them. Okay. So thin pressure vessels are capable of resisting high internal pressure. So thin pressure vessel whether it be a cylinder or a sphere has high capacity to resist internal pressure but it is very poor in resisting external pressures. So even if you even if you remember if you see your pressure cooker is a thin pressure vessel, it's a cylindrical almost. So it has capable it has a capacity to resist high internal pressure but external resistance pressure is very less. So <clears throat> our thin cylinders external pressure with ex external pressure when this करने के लिए बनाएं तो उनकी कैपेसिटी बहुत बहुत है। If you see thick vessels, they are good to resist internal pressure as well as they are good to resist external pressure. So दोनों pressures वो हैंडल कर सकते हैं। Okay, so what are the things that we just learned is pressure vessel, any vessel, irrespective of geometry, which holds or contains explosive pressure or implosive pressure. So अगर एक्सप्लोसिव प्रेशर भी हो सकता है या इंप्लोसिव प्रेशर हो सकता है उसको कुचल सकता है तो ऐसे वेसल्स को हम लोग प्रेशर वेसल्स बोलते हैं इनको दो तर, दो कैटेगरी दो तरीके में कैटेगराइज किया गया है एक है थिन वेसल्स एक है थिक वेसल्स थिन वेसल्स में हम लोग कैसे डिफ्रेंशिएट करेंगे व्हेन योर इंटरनल डायमीटर जो थिकनेस रेशियो इज ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू 15 देन इट्स अ थिन अदरवाइज इट इज थिक Again, depending upon the job, geometry, we classified a cylinder and spheres. And the important problem, thing to note here is thin vessels are capable of resisting high internal pressures, while thick vessels take both internal and external pressures. Now, if you see in this diagram, I have taken a cylindrical structure. This is the internal diameter which is given as D. So, with, for nomenclature purpose, we will write it as D. R. So we have internal diameter here as dr. If you see, this is the thickness of the cylindrical vessel. This is the thickness of the cylindrical vessel. And I have taken a planar element here on the surface of the cylinder. So this is the outer surface of the cylinder on which I have taken an infinitesimal planar element. And on that planar element, I have shown some stresses sigma h and sigma. L. So these are the normal stresses which are coming because of the internal pressure Pi. 
so this cylinder internally is subjected to some pressure which is p r so there is some internal pressure in the cylinder having internal diameter di thickness t and because of this internal pressure i am getting some stresses sigma h and sigma l this sigma h is known as hoop stress or circumferential stress or sometimes it is also known as diametrical stress so this sigma h is known by three nomenclatures one is hoop one is other is circumferential and the next one is diametrical stress so as the name indicates here circumferential so if you see this sigma h is along the circumference of the cylinder okay so sigma h is along the circumference of the cylinder so that stress which acts along the circumference of the cylinder is known as hoop stress or circumferential stress and the stress which acts along the longitudinal axis of the cylinder is known as longitudinal stress given by sigma l okay so on cylinder thin cylinder specifically you get two stresses two normal stresses one is hoop stress and the other is longitudinal stress so what are the relations what are the equations to evaluate the stresses sigma h is pi into di upon 2t where pi is the high internal pressure dr is the internal diameter t is the thickness of the pressure vessel now sigma h is tensile in nature this sigma h will always be tensile in nature it cannot be compressed because it is resisting high internal pressures so this is another important point you should remember hoop stress is tensile stress and is given by pi di upon 2t then i have sigma l longitudinal stress is given as pi di upon 4t upon 4t and again i have written here tensile so longitudinal stress is also tensile in nature so what you need to remember here is both this formulas and also that both this longitudinal and hoop stress together are tensile in nature they cannot be compressive okay they cannot be compressive stresses now they definitely share relationship between them if you see sigma h is two times of sigma l in other words sigma l is half of sigma h which i have given in this equation so what we learn today is thin cylinders when subjected to internal pressure gives rise to two stresses both of which are tensile stresses and both the stresses are normal stresses as well one of them is known as hoop stress or circumferential stress or diametrical stress the other is known as longitudinal stress and hoop stress is always double the longitudinal stress in case of thin cylinders we'll continue the same concepts in the next session as well